Welcome back to the land of track. We're coming to you from deep in the heart of Tracklandia, among the Douglas fir, the eagle, the salmon, and the rushing waters of the Mackenzie. Or we could be on the moon, or in a Hollywood soundstage, sitting next to an exact replica of the picturesque Mackenzie River Community Track Facility. If we are at the Mackenzie River Track, we'll let you know that it was constructed on a plot of land that was an old mill pond for the Seneca Sawmill that supplied the lumber to build the Old West Grandstand at Hayward Field. You could say that we're at the origin place of, Hay of the Hayward Field magic. Like the headwaters of the mighty Mississippi, you could say that we're sitting at the Lake Itasca of track. But don't drive that way. We're most likely on an exact replica built to scale on the surface of the moon. Look up at the sky and blow a kiss. Today's allotment of races will come to be known by future track geeks as the Bigger Friendly, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. It's part of our regularly scheduled 2020 Tracklandia space race programming. Like other space programs, we don't know how far we're going or when the funding will dry up, so let's enjoy the ride. We've got a loaded lineup today with athletes from Wazell Little Wing, the Brooks Beasts, the Oregon Track Club, Pete Julian's Detroit Pistons, and a few other familiar all-stars from the PNW. The races we'll have the privilege of watching uh, them compete in are in order. The men's 600 meter, the women's 600 meter, the men's 1,000 meter, the women's 1,000 meter, the men's 3,000 meter race, the women's 3,000 meters, and a good old fashioned world relay styled two by two by 400 that nobody knows how to describe, you just have to see it. It's a team of one man and one woman alternating legs of a four by 400 meter race against great and worthy opponents. Got it? Good. All athletes competed today have competed, completed two negative COVID-19 tests in the week leading up to today's Bigger Friendly, and our skeleton crew inside the facility is adhering to strict social distancing guidelines and are responsibly wearing masks. Upon entering the facility, temperature checks are conducted for everyone. I'll give you the rundown of the competitors in the men's 600 right now. We've got four athletes in this race. First up, there's Derek Holdsworth. He's a West, Western Oregon Wolf. He's run 147.7 indoors at the Dempsey this year. Also on the line, we have Daniel Maton. He's a freshman at UW. He ran 149 last year at the Portland Track Festival as a high schooler. He's the brother of Matthew Maton and Ashley Maton. Ashley will see later today. Next on the line, we have Drew Wendell of the Brooks Beast. Drew's got a best in the 800 of 144.63. And then next up on the line, we have Nigel Amos of the Oregon Track Club. He's run 141.73 for the 800 meters, and that was in his silver medal race in the 2012 Olympics. Nigel also plays the bongos and has a scheduled aud audition with the Tracklandia band pretty soon. Race is off. Runners are out right now, heading around the first curve. They're starting in lanes, and then they're gonna hit the brake here. Looks like Nigel Amos is out front first, and then Drew Wendell slots into second. That's Derek Holdsworth behind him and Daniel Maton. It looks like it was a 24 to 25 second 200 there. They're heading around 300 mark right now, and Drew Wendell's pulling up on Nigel Amos's shoulder. Drew Wendell's pulling ahead as they approach the quarter mark here. It looks like 50 seconds through the quarter. Nigel Amos isn't letting him go. Derek Holdsworth is holding on back there. He's about four meters back, maybe five. And Drew and Nigel are still bunched up there. They're side by side coming down the final straight. Nigel pushing to the front again. He looks a lot stronger than he did a couple weeks ago. Derek Holdsworth giving a fight up for a second here. Nigel crosses the line first in about 116 low. Then Derek Holdsworth, then Drew Wendell, and then Daniel Maton. Nigel Amos, widely regarded as one of the top two 800 meter runners in the world. It was an interesting race there. He got out in front. He let Drew Wendell pass him, and then he came back and snatched victory from the jaws of defeat there. We're off and running, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the women's 600 coming up next. The winds died down. The sun's ducking behind these mountains of the moon here, wherever we are. 
The crew at the Hollywood Soundstage did a great job mocking up this place. We have the women's 600 meters. We have three competitors in this race. First up, we have Sadie Henderson. She's running with Wazelle Little Wing out of Bend. She's run 202 in the 800 meters. Next up on the line, we have Nia Atkins. This is her debut wearing the Brooks Beast uniform. She's a rookie out of uh, UPenn. She's run two flat .71 in the 800 meters. And then next up on the line, we have Chanel Price of the Oregon Track Club. She's undefeated this season because she's, she took the win in the 800 at the Big Friendly in 201.47. That was a dominant win. The suspense is building. And they're off. Rounding the first curve. Chanel Price, Sadie Henderson, Nia Atkins. They're approaching the break right now. Chanel Price is out in the lead. She's a noted front runner, been doing that since her high school days. Fantastic high school runner and college runner and pro runner. They're coming through the six or the 200. It was 26, 26 seconds through the 200 meters. That is a hot pace, ladies and gentlemen. She's still in front. We've got Nia Atkins behind her, and then Sadie Henderson right there, too. Nobody's giving an inch at the moment. There's no separation. They're actually tightening up a little bit as they're approaching the quarter. Chanel Price in front, and we're at 56 seconds, so that was roughly a 30-second second 200 there. The order hasn't changed at all. It looks like Nia Atkins is pushing up onto Chanel Price a little bit here as they head into the home straight. Nia Atkins swinging wide on Chanel Price right now. Chanel Price trying to defend her un undefeated season at the moment. She's holding the lead. We got Sadie Henderson coming in too. Nia Atkins in the lead right now. Nia Atkins takes the victory in a very tight race. It looks like 126 for the 600 there. It's unclear who got second at the moment. I think it was still Chanel Price who got second, and then Sadie Henderson very close in third. That is some great racing right there. Nia Atkins, her first victory wearing the Brooks Beast singlet. I think it's a good omen. She's off on the right foot, and so are we here at the Bigger Friendly. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Athletes competing in the ice cold beer 1,000 meters today are Dustin Nading. He's an unattached runner. He's run 342.38 in the 1500, set at the Portland Track Festival in 2018. They do a great job putting on meets over there at Portland Track. Man, do they ever. We've also got Jake Hayward in this race. Jake Hayward, a member of the Oregon Track Club. A 20-year-old athlete. He's run 336 at the age of 19 in the 1500. His teammate is also on the line, Vincent Ciotti. Vincent's from Baltimore, Maryland. He also got second in the Big Friendly two weeks ago in the 1500 in a personal best of 339. That was his first time under 340 in the metric mile. Also in the race, we have Sam Prakel. Sam's an Adidas athlete and he trains up in Seattle. He recently ran 250 for a time trial in the 1200 meters. From the north, from the Brooks Beast, Josh Kerr. Josh was sixth in the world last year at 1500. Looks like we have Drew Windle doubling back. Maybe he's gonna help out with the pacing. Whistle is blown for athletes to head to the line. They're already there, they look ready to go. Oh, they're setting. And they're off. It's hard to tell from the inside here. It looks like that could be Sam Prakel, Josh Kerr, Dustin Nading, Vincent Ciotti, uh, Jake Hayward and Drew Wendell closing in. So Drew Wendell taking the shortest line to the 200 meter mark here, which is hit in about two, 26 seconds. So Drew Wendell up front, Josh Kerr right behind him, and then Sam Prakel. That's your order. Everybody's strung out. Drew Wendell took him through 300 there. And then he left Josh Kerr up front, Sam Prakel tightening it up. We've got Jake Hayward and Vincent Ciotti, they're your four, and then Dustin Nading hanging on to the back. So 54 seconds roughly 
through 400 meters. Josh Kerr still at the front, Sam Prakel. Everybody's feeling okay with sitting behind Josh right now, letting him do the work. Josh is a strong lad though, he can handle it. I imagine he's got something up his sleeve here too. Bell lap coming up, lap to go. They're at 121, 122. So very good 600 meter time there. And the order has not changed yet in this race. Everybody, oh, it looks like Vincent Ciotti's making a move up from the back there, but his teammate's holding him off. Josh Kerr still at the front. Now Jake Hayward making a move. The boys in green are getting a little antsy. Josh Kerr still in front, and it looks like he might be getting some daylight here. He's getting himself a little gap. Sam Prakel swinging wide. He's going to the arms. They're fighting down the stretch here. Josh Kerr is extending his lead. I don't think anybody's going to get to him. Sam Prakel coming in that second position. 216, 217, 218. Another bunched up finish and 216 for the K for Josh Kerr. What a time. And I don't know where that ranks on the all-time list for Great Britain, but we can do some research afterwards. I know Sebastian Coe has a, a time way up there. I know Josh was mainly concerned about the victory today, and that is a nice one there. So we've got the women's 1,000 meters coming up soon, and then we have the men's 3,000 meters, and then the women's 3,000 meters, and then what everybody's really excited for, and nobody really knows how to describe, is the 2x2x400 two by two by meter relay, and that's going to be a barn burner there. In this women's 1,000 meters, we're going to have Carissa Nelson towing the line for the Brooks Beast. Uh, running with her is Rebecca Mayra from the Wazell Little Wing group, and that's out of Bend. And then joining them, we have Constance Klosterhofen, and she opened her season in 204.07 at the Big Friendly a couple weeks ago. This is her first of three races today, believe it or not. Our official Bruce Davis is giving him instructions right now. Looks like we have Carissa Nelson on the inside, then Rebecca Mayra, then Coco, and then Nia Atkins on the outside. They're off. Heading around the first bend towards the break here. Nia Atkins is getting out hard. She wants to make sure she can get to the front. And they break, and we'll see how they stack up when they fall into the first lane. Nia Atkins pushing forward here. And then we've got Coco right behind her, then Rebecca Mayra, and then Carissa Nelson. That's about a 30-second first 200 for Nia Atkins. And then they're heading around the top bend right now. And Nia Atkins still in the front. Order's unchanged. Coco right behind her. Coco's got that long stride. And Nia Atkins pulling off down the middle of the backstretch, leaving Coco out to the front there. And then Rebecca Mayra and then Carissa Nelson. So they're heading into the lap. And that's about a 62 second first lap. I think in the discussions prior to the race, that was around what they wanted to get out in. So they're very much on pace as they head into this 600 meter mark. Nobody's making a move yet. Coco's out in the front, Rebecca Mayra here, and then Carissa Nelson. So that was a 31 second 200 there. So the pace looks like 30 for the first 200, then a 32, and then a 31 once Coco took the front. And now they're heading into the 800 meter mark here, and still the order is unchanged. It looks like Coco and Rebecca Mayra are getting a little space on Carissa Nelson right now. Rebecca Mayra not letting go of Coco. 
and they hit the 800 at around 206. Another 31 mid second 200 there for Coco and Rebecca Mayra still holding on. But right now it looks like Coco's extending it a little bit as they come into the final straight. Coco's a warrior here. She can do this over 5,000 meters. She can run from the front all the way and it looks like she's gonna take the victory here in about 236, 237 for Rebecca and then a 240 for Carissa Nelson. So she gets under her time trial time of 242 from earlier this season. But 236, 237, those are some hot times here at the Bigger Friendly. Ladies giving each other some elbow bumps here. We'll let it slide. That's the first victory here at the Bigger Friendly for Pete's Dragons. Coco, a part of that group, along with Craig Engels, who you'll see later today, and a few others. Shannon Robery, you'll see her later today. Donovan Brazier and Raven Rogers, and Suguru Osako, the man they call Sugar. The competitors here lining up in this men's 3,000 meters brought to you by a sticky substance that can seal the bottom of your boat. Uh, first up, we have Suguru Osako. Joining him in the 3,000 meters, we have Henry Wynn, and he's a Brooks beast. Henry's a 351 miler. He did that indoors, and he's also a 335 1,500 meter runner. And joining them, the RV driving, mustache wearing, mullet donning, sometimes handsome haircut wearing Craig Engels, also with Pete Julian's Flying Circus. Craig opened up his season this year two weeks ago at the Big Friendly with a solo finish of 148.55 in the 800 meters. And as these guys take the line, I believe they will be joined by Dustin Nading, as well as Sam Prakel. And the gun is up. And they're off. Craig Engels goes straight to the front, and here comes Sam Prakel to step out in front of him there, shepherd him around for a few laps. It looks like Dustin Nading is sitting this one out. I think I see him walking there on the gravel. We've got Sam Prakel, Craig Engels, Henry Wynn, and Sugar Osako here. Ooh, it's out a little hot. I think that was a 29 second first 200. Settle it down a little bit, Sam. Or who knows, maybe Craig's going after the world record today. Henry Wynn's sitting back a little bit with sugar on his heels. So I could be wrong, but it, that, that was a, a pretty fast first lap. I think from, from my watch, it looks like it was around 60 to 61 seconds. So they're getting after it here. We'll see. Hopefully they settle into pace a little bit, or if they don't settle into pace, we'll see something pretty special, which I don't mind. We know that Craig is pretty strong right now. Two weeks ago at the bigger friendly, or the big friendly, excuse me, he ran 148.55 and Donovan Brazier paced him in that race. Donovan went through in 49 and Craig went through in 50, which is a, that's a tall order for the first race of the season, especially during these times for a 1500 meter runner. But Craig was game and he went through and then he, he closed it up nicely down that final 200. It looks like he was pretty, pretty spread out with 200 meters to go, but he pulled himself together and he finished very strong. So we could still call him undefeated heading into this race this season. Henry Wynn, this is his opener this year.
We were talking to Henry Wynn's coach before this, Danny Mackey, and he said that, well, we're all dealing with a little bit of a, a shakeup in training this year due to the obvious circumstances here. But Henry Wynn's looking pretty good and, and looking to get into this race and mix it up a little bit. And Sugar is there as well. I wouldn't be surprised if Suguru Osako ran pretty close to the pace that he ran uh, for the 1500 for this 3000 meters here. So the first lap was close to 60 seconds, I believe, and that the 800 from 400 meters to 1200 meters was 208. So they're settling into a, a nice pace here. And we see Suguru Osako coming up on the side of Henry Wynn here. And he's ducking in behind Craig right now. So Sam Prakel still at the front. And then a little order change up, because we've got Craig Engels, Suguru Osako, and then Henry Wynn behind him. So seven and a half beautiful, majestic laps for this 3,000 meters here in this picturesque setting. Whether it's a real setting or a fake setting, it's beautiful here. What's this? We've got a 63 second lap for that fifth lap here. Oh, sorry, for the fourth lap. 63 seconds for the fourth lap. So they're roughly, I want to say about 412 through the 1600. That, that took me a long time, I, I know, to do that math. And then Sam Prakel has stepped off, and now we have Suguru Osako going to the front. And Craig Engels is right on his heels, and then there's a little bit of a gap back to Henry Wynn. So we have the two men for Pete Julian's Flying Circus making a push here in this 3,000 meters. And now it looks like we have Craig Engels pushing to the front to take over for Suguru. And what do they have? Let's see, I think that was about a, another 63 second lap there through 2K. So Craig Engels at the front. Henry went in no man's land a little bit here. He's gonna have to summon something Craig Engels pushing now. He's getting a little bit of daylight here between himself and his teammate Suguru Osako, the marathoner, Japanese record holder in the 3,000, 5,000, and marathon. And Craig Engels tracks Wild Sweetheart out there. He's in his element out in these hills, wherever we are. We're coming up here on 2,400 meters, and that's a 64 second lap. 64 seconds through, for that lap through 2,400 meters. There's less than 800 meters, less, or less than 600 meters to go now. And Craig has got himself some distance, and I don't think he wants to give any of it back, so he's gonna get, keep pushing here. Suguru Osako in second. Henry Wynn's got his sights as we go into the bell lap here. That was about a 63 for Craig Engels, as we heard our friend Scott Olberding yelling down there through his mask. Scott Olberding, founder of the Jacuzzi Boys Track Club and treasurer at Portland Track, local celebrity. Craig Engels pushing down the back stretch now. He's got a very good distance on Suguru Osako. I say he's got this race locked up. And then Henry Wynn behind Suguru too. Henry Wynn's got some leg speed. Let's see if he tries to use it here going into the final 200 meters. Craig's got a nice cushion. Is Henry Wynn gonna wind it up? Is he gonna try to take down Sugar here? 
That's what I want to know. Sugar's looking sweet too, though. Doesn't look like he wants to give anything back. Oh, Henry Wynn closing it down a little bit, but has he left it a little too late? Craig Engels coming in here for the finish. Craig Engels around 752 for the victory. And it's going to be very close here. But Seguru's got it in about 759. And then Henry Wynn coming in right after. Nice little finish put together there for Henry Wynn, but it wasn't quite enough to catch, catch Seguru Osako. Sugar was a little too sweet in that last 200 meters. And Craig Engels back on top here, still undefeated in this outdoor season. He's got his solo victory in the 800 at the big friendly, and now a friendlier victory in the 3,000 meters at the bigger friendly. But right now we have the women going to the line in the 3,000 meters themselves. But rounding out this field, we have Allie Cash, and she's up in Seattle training right now. She's run 906 in the 3,000 meters. We might be in Kansas right now, I don't know. Joining her, we have Katie Rainsberger, and she's unattached. She's, she takes her classes at the University of Washington. And uh, she's run 856.24 in the 3,000 meters, and she's run 409 for the 15. Uh, we've got Ashley Maton as well, a former Oregon Duck. She's run 411 in the 1,500, and she's run 919 for the 3,000 meters. We have Eleanor Fulton, the pride of Portland, Oregon. She's run 408 in the 1,500 meters, and that was last year to make the finals at USA Outdoors. Uh, they're joined by Shannon Robery, also with Pete Julian's Detroit Pistons. Uh, she's the former American record holder, like I said, in the 1,500 and 5,000 meters, and those times are 356 and 1438. And then we have Co Coco joining, too, and the race is off. So Coco doubling back from the 1,000 meters from her victory there in 236. And we also have Mel Lawrence in this race from Little Wing uh, out of Bend. And Mel Lawrence is a steeplechase extraordinaire. And she's run 929 in that event and 850 for the 5,000 meters. So Mel Lawrence is at the front right now and she's pushing, pushing the pace. And that is roughly 33 to 34 seconds through the first 200 meters. So we have Mel Lawrence, Coco on her shoulder, and then Shannon Robery. And then it looks like Katie Rainsberger potentially. No, that's Eleanor Fulton. I'm sorry. That's because Eleanor. And then Katie Rainsberger. And then Ashley Maton and Allie Cash. But there's a group of three already separating themselves a little bit up front, and that's led by Mel Lawrence. Then we have Coco, and then we have Shannon Robery. And they went through in a tad under 70 seconds, I believe. So 70 seconds, I think, was the prescribed pace to get out. Uh, we never know if, we never know what can happen with prescribed paces. I mean, sometimes they can be a little fast, a little slow. Or maybe people get antsy and they just want to get after it. So we'll see how long Coco can hang back there. As we know, she's a, a known front runner and she might want to push it a little bit. But Mel Lawrence still at the front at this moment and Shannon Robery looking pretty comfortable behind Coco. Eleanor Fulton leading that chase pack and following her is Katie Rainsberger. So we're coming up here to the second lap of the women's 3,000 meters, and we'll get you a split. So that, they're right, right about 70 again. That's 219 through the 800 meters there. Mel Lawrence, like clockwork, taking them through in this wonderful evening here at the Bigger Friendly. Beautiful night for a track race out here in the hills. There's no place I'd rather be. 
And here's Mel Lawrence coming through the finish line here. And Katie Rainsberger now going to the front of this chase pack. And Eleanor Fulton follows her. And then Ashley Maton and then Allie Cash. Back to race, and it looks like that front pack is moving a bit. We'll see if they picked up their pace heading into this 1,200 meter mark. Coco's sitting on Mel's outside shoulder, and Shannon's tucked in there on the rail. So this is about a, another 70 second lap for Mel Lawrence. So a real bang up job here with the pacing. And who knows, maybe Mel's sticking in it. Maybe she wants to get after it. But yeah, it looks like Coco's raring to go on her shoulder here. Coco's got that long stride, so she's got to give herself some space. And we can see Pete Julian walking across the infield here, keeping a close eye on his runners, hitting the paces. And here comes Katie Rainsberger leading this second pack. Eleanor Fulton behind her. And the order is unchanged from the last lap there. Now we have Mel Lawrence. Oh, a little, little, little brace herself there from Coco on Mel Lawrence's back. And it looks like Mel Lawrence is pulling off to the side here. And Coco wants to go. So here is another 70 as Mel Lawrence steps off the track. And now it is Coco and Shannon Robery up front. And the two of them are pu pushing solo into the abyss. As we have less than a mile to go. Much less than a mile. And now it looks like we have three packs of two here on the track. So we've got Coco and Shannon Robery up front, and then we have Katie Rainsberger and Eleanor Fulton in the second pack of two. And then we have Ashley Maton and Ali Cash in another pack of two. So this race has turned into a, a set of three separate duels. So there's a race for everybody to enjoy. And this is heading into 2,000 meters. Coco approaching that line right now. The Shannon Robery right on her. Some words from their, their coach, Pete Julian, who's jogging across the infield again. That lap was a 69, roughly, maybe close to 70. Unofficially 69 high. And now Eleanor Fulton has moved in front of Katie Rainsberger, and she's getting some distance on Rainsberger right now. Eleanor Fulton been training at Elevation in Colorado for at least a month's time, I think. And I, I think they were pretty high up there, maybe close to 9,000 feet. So we know she's probably pretty fit. But it's still Coco up front and Shannon Robery close in tow. And now that third duo has broken up and Allie Cash has moved in front of Ashley Maton and is getting some distance and she's closing in on Katie Rainsberger here. And Coco staring down the 2400 meter mark here. And they cross in 68 seconds. So she's ratcheting it down a little bit. We started with 70s up front and then maybe a couple 69s. And now we're down to 68s. And Coco stepped off the track and she's leaving Shannon Robery to go solo here. And Shannon Robery, here's the bell lap. Love to hear that bell. That was a 34 second 200 there for a Robery. And she's opening it up a little bit. And we have Eleanor Fulton leading Katie Rainsberger, who has 
not dropped off as much as Eleanor probably would have liked. She's still very much in that race. And then Ali Cash behind her. Shannon Robery pushing here. She's approaching the 200 meter mark, 200 meters to go. And she's at roughly 8.07 through there. Ali Cash crossing the finish line here with a lap to go. And here comes Shannon Robery. She is looking strong with 100 meters to go. She has a comfortable lead right now, but that's not enough for her, it looks like. Opening up her stride. It's got to feel good to race again. Here she is coming through. I think she might have broken 840 for that one, looking at 839. That's a very good opener for Shannon Robery. And we've got another victor from Pete Julian's group, Shannon Robery in the women's 3,000 meters. And here we have Eleanor Fulton coming down the stretch for second place here at the Bigger Friendly, opening up her outdoor season. Finishing strong in about 9.13, and Katie Rainsberger right behind her in about 9.16, 9.17. Then we have Allie Cash coming in after Rainsberger in about 9.25. Shannon Robery looking pretty happy with that finish right there. Back to racing in 2020. Part of the Tracklandia Space Race program that we have going on. The bigger friendly. And Ashley Maton finishes. And that rounds it out for the women's 3,000 meters and the individual track races for the evening. And now we're going to move on to something, something pretty special for your viewing pleasure. The 2x400 two by, two by meter relay. Paging Mr. Brazier. Good evening, Mr. Brazier. Are you there? Miss Rogers? Are you there? Looks like we see Craig Engels and Coco with a baton. They're a duo. We have Raven Rogers and Donovan Brazier. And they'll be facing off against Chanel Price and Nigel Amos. So we have three teams in this race. Here we are. It looks like the first leg. So. The, it looks like Nigel Amos and Donovan Brazier have chosen not to face off, and neither have Chanel Price and Raven Rogers. But that's going to provide some good entertainment with this chasing going on. Donovan Brazier is leading off. Then we have Chanel Price. Oh, sorry. I was, I was looking at the wrong group. <laughs> we have Nigel Amos leading off, and Craig Engels, and Raven Rogers here. I don't know what I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting so excited here. So we have Craig Engels holding his own right now against Nigel Amos up front, and Raven Rogers not too far behind them. It looks like Raven Rogers came through right about 28 seconds. And we'll get a lap split here. So this is an unofficial lap split. Nigel and, and Craig, so this is about oh, close to 50 seconds. And then here comes Raven Rogers, and this will be near 58 seconds for her. Now we have Chanel Price on the track, and she's being tracked by Coco, and then Donovan Brazier behind them. Donovan Brazier looking smooth out there. In the 2x2x400 two by two by meters, he's tracking them right now. He's closing in on Coco. They're coming up to the 100 meters to go mark here. And Donovan Bra Brazier swinging wide and going around Chanel Price and Constance Klosterhofen. 
Donovan Brazier handing off to Raven Rogers here. And he's got about a 49-5. About a 49-5 for his split, first split of the evening. Can he run both of these under 50 seconds this evening? And it looks like Nigel Amos goes to the front again, and Craig Engels is, is sitting on his shoulder. Craig Engels not giving up the fight here. They're both on their second legs, and then Raven Rogers tracking them. Raven Rogers, the newest addition to Pete Julian's New Orleans Pelicans. And now Nigel's getting a little bit of space on Craig. But we'll see. We know that Craig's a strong guy. And he could push. So I, I don't know what, what split this is going to be here for, for the other groups. Uh, we're going to have to check the paperwork afterwards. But here we go. That was about a 101 for Raven Rogers. And we have Chanel Price up front and Coco in second. And Donovan Brazier, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like he's on his first lap. He's past Coco. He's now passing Chanel Price in this 2 by 2 by 4 He's got less than 200 meters to go. What is this time going to be? He's coming up with to 100 meters to go. This track doesn't look big enough for Donovan Brazier. He can get around it so easily. He's driving for home. He knows he's got the win in the bag right now. And a little shrug across the finish line. He's run 51 seconds for his second 400 meters, and I think that was close to about a 340 for the victors in that race. Donovan Brazier and Raven Rogers coming in for the win. Beautiful. Wow. Two by two by 400 meters. What a way to close out the night. And maybe we'll get to see what Donovan Brazier can do in the 800 coming up. Oh, I don't know, sometime this season. But that's it for the big friendly. The bigger friendly, sorry ladies and gentlemen. You know the big friendly was two weeks ago. The athletes will now take a dip in the cool cleansing moon waters before grabbing a slice of cheese and heading back to the space shuttle. And I'll do the same. From the entire Portland track crew here in the heart of Tracklandia, be safe, take care of each other, keep the dream alive, and we'll see you next time. Good night, we're hitting the Taco Bell drive-thru.